This webinar is organized by Echo Medical Company and regarding to his rich experience in the field of microwave <laughs> operation. It's our great honor to invite <laughs> Professor <laughs> Jun <laughs> from Shuchuan Hospital, Taipei, to share his experience <laughs> with us. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Jun is the superintendent of Shuchuan Hospital. Professor Jun has been engaged in the treatment of gynecological disease for more than 20 years, specializing in minimally invasive and non-invasive treatment of gynecological tumors. He has accumulated Later, uh, 12,000 cases of the clinical surgical experience, published more than 100 academic papers, and wrote more than 30 popular books. Before our webinar, I want to give a yeah. brief introduction about CCMA. CCMA is short for China Conference on Microwave Ablation. It's an international platform for academic exchange and multi-party cooperation in the field of microwave ablation. With the initiative of ECHO, experts from ablation fields widely supported, formed, and organized this international forum. So on behalf of CCMA and ECHO Medical, I'd like to thank you all for joining us today. According to the course agenda tonight, uh, today, Professor Jun will give us a lecture first, and we will have a discussion part. This webinar will offer valuable information and perspectives. We encourage you to widely uh, actively engage in this discussion. Ask a question in the chat box or open your microphone during the discussion part. Now, let's welcome Professor Jun to start his presentation. Thank you, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. You... OK, OK, OK. Uh, let me introduce myself first. I am uh, currently uh, the professor of gynecology in Kaohsiung Medical University. Uh, it's a huge uh, medical center in southern Taiwan. And I'm also the superintendent of uh, Taipei Xiuquan Hospital uh, in northern Taiwan. It's a small regional hospital. And I'm also the honorary president of Taiwan Association of Gynecological Tumor Operation and also the president of Asia Pacific Association of Gynecological Tumor Operation. So if you are located in uh, South, in an Asia Pacific area, I, I welcome you everybody to join this new uh, organization. And I'm also the vice president of International Society for Minimally Invasive and Non-Invasive Medicine, and also the vice president of uh, International College of Surgeons World Headquarters. Uh, okay. Hey, Wei Chengjin. Wei Chengjin, he won't move. He won't move. This is a bit difficult. Okay. Oh, uh, I I I like this uh uh very uh famous golden sentence. Uh, disease that harm requires therapies that harm less. Is uh said by uh Sir William Osler. He was the one of the four uh, famous doctors establishing Johns Hopkins uh, Hospital, uh, College of uh, Medical College in in the states, and he was also the dean of the medical school at Oxford, England. And that uh, we need to find uh, every kind of uh, therapy that. Uh, harm our that harm this that uh, you know the, because disease that already harm us and we need that harm this to treat every uh, patient is very important because so that uh, we 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 know everybody know we are trying to do a uh, minimally invasive surgery for almost thirty years but now we are trying to do some. Uh, non invasive surgery too. Uh, here on the right hand side, we use radio frequency abrasion, microwave abrasion, and also high full, high intensity focused ultrasound surgery. And uh, actually uh, uh, for the abrasion technique, uh, we have, we, we, we know there are five features of the abrasion technology. The first one is there's broad indications and the second one is efficient. And the third one is less trauma. The fourth one is combined therapy. 
it's very easy to combine with other therapies, other uh, therapeutic modalities. And the, uh, the, the last one is immune regulation because of the uh, ambulation, ablation technique can induce some uh, immune response from our body. And uh, in the past uh, 15 years, I uh, spent much time on uh, focused ultrasound surgery, including MR guide focused ultrasound and the ultrasound guide focused ultrasound. <clears throat> in Taiwan, so far we have uh, almost 20 hospitals uh, providing the services of high intensity focused ultrasound. And this is a uh, 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 non invasive surgery. I, sp I, you know, I start to, to treat my patient with focused ultrasound uh, since 2009. And uh, there is one kind of prone with prone position of hive therapy. And the second one is supine position of a uh, hive therapy. And uh, you know, we, we can find uh, after uh, high food, we, we, we found on the of the right on the right right hand side, you can see the tumor, the uterine tumor was totally abraded. And this you can see also many tumors can be operated at one time. And for this one, the same. But so, so there is a systemic review of minimally invasive approach to uterine fibroid treatment for improving quality of life and the fibroid, fibroid associated symptoms. And uh, it is the systemic review uh, said, UAE, uterine artery embryonation, MR guided force ultrasound, and uh, ultrasound guided, guided force, uh, focus ultrasound, radio frequency abrasion, and the uh, percutaneous microwave abrasion all can uh, significantly decrease the symptom severity score. Yeah. But, but for adenomyosis, sometimes with high flu, we still can have these nice pictures after high flu good abrasion, but not always this condition. So uh, about two years ago, I started to do uh, another kind of minimally invasive surgery that's called uh, microwave abrasion. I call it a uh, super minimally invasive, that not only minimally invasive, that's because the wound on the abdominal skin is minimally invasive but the wound on the uterine surface is only a, a pinpoint no, hole. It's not, it's not okay. 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 Uh, and and uh, so on, the, on this here, you can see the, the, the surgical wound on the uterine sur surface is only a pinpoint hole. Uh, it's not, not a pinpoint wound. And uh, about this super minimally invasive microwave abrasion, we, we, we need the patient uh, to be done the, uh, under general anesthesia. That's different from high foot surgery. With high foot surgery, we only we don't do general anesthesia. Uh, and, but with super minimally invasive micro abra microwave abrasion, we have four routes to do that. The first one is trans laparoscopy. The second one is trans abdominal skin. The third one is trans vagina. The fourth one is trans cervical. And uh, uh, the, the uh, tip of the antenna, of the, the microwave antenna, uh, can be uh, increased to up to 60 to 100 degrees within several seconds. Several second. And the operation time is only maybe 30 minutes or even less to up to 90 minutes, minutes depends on the uh, lesions. And this is a photo, uh, we, we do the operation in uh, Southern Taiwan, Kaohsiung Medical University Hospital, and in Northern Taiwan in uh, Xochuan Hospital here. And then uh, you can see, actually this is the antenna, antenna of the uh, echo uh, microwave, this antenna, we, we, you, you can see uh, 
when we insert this this needle like antenna to the uh, target area, then it can be fired, you know, almost immediately. It's very fast. And then uh, we are talking about laparoscopic uh, microwave aberration. You know, it, this afternoon I'm going to, to talk about this majorly because uh, in Taiwan, most doctors use trans laparoscopic, laparoscopic guide in way, you know, to do this. The reason why we, we choose laparoscopic guide, I, I will I will I will talk it about talk about it later, yeah. And then uh, actually uh, the, the company usually provide us uh, many uh, guidelines, uh, you know, about how how many how how many uh, power you use. The, the abrasive area will be uh, how how wide or how depth. But I I almost don't use this one. You know, I I use my eyes to to watch at the ultrasound because when you watch at the ultrasound, you can see the uh, abrasion area very clearly. And then for uh, sometimes the patient still need uh, fertility. They have a particular desire, you know. You have to define the location of endometrium and uh, just don't abrade the endometrium, don't damage the endometrium. And this is the arterial marriages, and this is this line is endometrium, it's still intact. And uh, if you uh, some some people said we if we if we combine transvaginal ultrasound. And the trans ultrasound to guide the percutaneous microwave abrasion of it, it will be a uh, more effective monitoring technique. Yes, I use trans vaginal ultrasound majorly, and uh, uh, it's especially good for patients with obesity, poor trans abdominal ultrasound image quality, and the large myoma volumes. You can see. Uh, uh, because with transvaginal ultrasound, trans abdominal ultrasound from the abdomen, abdominal skin is not so clear. But uh, with transvaginal ultrasound, it's much more clear. And because our wound is uh, in uh, on the abdominal skin, so some, sometimes I prefer prefer uh, transvaginal ultrasound much more than uh, trans abdominal ultrasound. And then uh, and and with transvaginal ultrasound. You can see uh, the the abdominal ultrasound. You can see not so clear, you know, behind the the, the needle or the abraded area. But trans vaginal ultrasound is much better than uh, than the uh, trans abdominal ultrasound. As this is a video, a short video regarding uh, microwave abrasion. You can see, yeah, it's very fast. You can see the hyper echogenic area almost uh, within five minutes or sometimes within three minutes, second, no, no, not a minute, second, you know, uh, is you can see the area to be uh, abraded. I usually uh, put some uh, artificial ascites with uh, normal saline in the abdominal cavity initially and also after every abrasion. Because you have be you have be uh, aware of the the possibility of the damage from the insertion hole, and uh, not only your current insertion hole, insertion hole, but also the past one or past the two, past three insertion holes. Because sometimes it's, it likes a volcano, and uh, uh, some bubble bubbles will come out from the uh, volcano, yeah, the the previous insertion holes. So I will talk about, I, I will take, uh, uh, talk about it later. And then uh, you can see, we, we, we can, uh, uh, we can uh, abrade this area and then we can move the, the, uh, the uh, in antenna to the superficial area and to abrade the more superficial area. Usually we abrade from the, uh, from the uh, deeper area and some and, and then to the superficial area. Sometimes we we, we made some cases with uh, very difficult condition, 
this patient had uh, had a past history of uterine rupture, pregnant with uterine rupture, and uh, uh, several operations about uh, her chocolate schist and adenomyosis and uterine myoma, and uh, uh, three failed into our, uh, IVF, three failed IVF and ET, and so. But she still, uh, although already is 45 years old, she still uh, want to get a baby and uh, request me to do HIFU for her. But I say HIFU is not so good for uh, adenomyosis. So for adenomyosis, she's asked for uh, uterine fibroid. And also because you have previous five surgical operations, I don't believe you, you, you don't have a uh, uh, bowel adhesion uh, or other adhesions in the abdominal cavity. And then uh, uh, there was a uh, uh, adhesion. And uh, for this case, because severe adhesion, I think, yeah. But I still we can uh, try to find a space. There's a uh, potential of to make sure the antenna is uh, far away enough from the. Outside of uterine serosa, millimeter at least millimeter away from the uterine serosa. Usually, for the usual case, the other usual case, not in this condition, I usually usually uh, a bright area. The the antenna usually uh, at least one centimeter. That's ten millimeter, you know, below the serosa. But for this one. I prefer to do this because it's much safer. But even without, uh, you know, even without uh, separation of the the bowel adhesion and uh, the the uterine posterior uterine serosa, I still finish this. You can see uh, this is the case I just mentioned about. Uh, this is uh, obliterated coup de sac. It's very severe adhesion, and I, I, I try to abrade it, and not to abrade the posterior serosa for preventing the damage to the uh, adhered bowel, and also don't abrade the area surrounding the intervention. You know, for 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 her uh, for future. Fertility potential. So, so uh, for this condition, sometimes we have to, we still have to, uh, to do this case for a difficult condition. That means uh, even uh, with uh, severe bowel adhesion, we still can try to do uh, the abrasion for the severe adenomyosis because this case. Is for this case, it's also not difficult because the condition cannot be easily resolved by high full surgery. And the patient still want to get pregnant. So uh, hysterectomy is not a, a good idea. For this one, yeah, I, I forget to talk about this one. Oh, so sorry. No, 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 this one. We are talking about uh, the contrast enhanced ultrasound. Contrast in hand ultrasound. After the surgery, microwave abrasion, we do contrast, we inject contrast medium and to see. If we uh, uh, totally abrade the area, we want, we want the high food medium to, to enhance ultrasound to make sure the, the effect uh, and for. Microwave vibration, we especially need contrast enhanced ultrasound because we usually don't uh, do MRI 
after the operation. But for five, we do that. And I use this uh, two uh, video to show you uh, transdermal, transabdominal wall operation. This video is uh, was recorded by me in Shanghai in uh, last uh, December. Because in Shanghai, number 10, number 10 uh, hospital, they uh, use uh, transdermal, uh, transdermal way, uh, transdermal wall. This way, because they, it's done by a uh, radio, interventional radiologist. It's not by gynecologist. And you can see it's the same. But uh, uh, later, you know, a few minutes later, I will talk about why we use uh, we use uh, trans abdominal trans uh, laparoscopic way laparoscopic laparoscopic guide uh, guided uh, microwave abrasion here in Taiwan. And this this uh, this condition you can see they also use contrast enhanced ultrasound to make sure the the effect of uh, microwave abrasion in Shanghai. Uh, how to uh, protect the endometrium? There's a, a paper said, an article said they use uh, trace abdominal way to insert to insert uh, endometrial cavity and uh, inject uh, distal water. And then you can see they find this. This is grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade four damage grade. And then uh, they find if you use the the technique to inject some fluid into the uterine cavity, most of the cases are not damaged. Grade zero is not damaged, and the control group. But I know in Taiwan some uh, doctors use uh, transvaginal way, you know, to inject some fluid into the uterine cavity uh, to the uh, to prevent the, the uh, potential of uh, uh, endometrial abrasion and um, endometrial damage. Uh, I think both are okay if you are familiar with either one, and that's good for you. And uh, here I'm going to talk. I'm going to talk about uh, why we use laparoscopic guide microwave abrasion, uh, and instead of just abdominal ultrasound guided uh, microwave abrasion, uh, like I just talked about it in Shanghai, because the first one is we 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 for gynecologists we like the direct vision, you know, to see is to believe. And then the second reason is we have enough space between uterus and the bowel and the spine. And uh, because we can uh, separate, uh, you know, the bowel, the, the bowel, the bowel and the, the uterine cell serosa. And so we can have much more abrasion area than strength of abdominal ultrasound guided and also than high food. And then, because under laparoscopic vision, we have less chance of complication. And it's a familiar technique for almost all gynecologists. And then, the last reason is especially uh, for Taiwan, but I don't know, is that, is, is that uh, also applicable for your countries? Uh, I know every, every, everybody you have. What everybody uh, in, in in every country maybe have different condition, but in Taiwan, it's much easier and better for us to uh, apply for national health insurance and also commercial insurance reimbursement because uh, with laparoscopy is a kind of surgery, but with transabdominal ultrasound, you know, in Taiwan. This is not 
thought to be a kind of surgery. And then the payment is not as good as surgery. So it's good, it's much better and for us to use laparoscopic surgery uh, then a trans abdominal and guided surgery. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it's a reason why we, most people here, and, and the most important uh, reasons are, you know, we can abrade much more area and much safer. And this, I raised one uh, question. Some people will say, uh, is, is that an ethical issue of laparoscopic guided microwave abrasion? Because since you, you already do laparoscopy, why don't you just remove the uterine fibroid or even the uterus? But I say, I don't think so. I don't think there is an ethical issue. Uh, because the first one, if you use particular microwave abrasion, you don't have a big uterine incision. You only have a pinpoint hole. You know, the wound is so small and the adhesion is much less. And then you don't need to do any suture for uh, uterine incision. And, you know, like laparoscopic myometomy or adenomyometomy. You don't need to do any suture. So much less adhesion. And uh, because you don't open the uterus, the, you don't incis incise the uterus, there's almost only minimally, minimal blood loss. No blood transfusion will be needed. And the operation time is much less than laparoscopic myometomy or adenomyometomy or hysterectomy or subtotal hysterectomy that's super cervical hysterectomy uh, for uh, microwave abrasion, the abrasion time is much less. And then because we want to preserve an uterus, especially for adenomyosis, if you want to preserve the uterus and then you can do just microwave abrasion instead of laparoscopic hysterectomy. So I don't think is a real ethical issues for laparoscopic guided microwave abrasion because I don't think it's, it, you can uh, compare uh, our minimally, super minimally invasive surgery with the minimally invasive surgery like uh, laparoscopic myometomy or hysterectomy yeah, because the condition is different. And uh, there is another issue. If you find the patient has uh, type one, type two, type three myoma, of course, it's, if it's small, you can just do uh, hysteroscopic myomectomy. But uh, if especially for type one or type zero, but type two and type three, I think type three, two and type three is very uh, suitable for transvaginal ultrasound guided transcervical microwave aberration. It's a kind of nose. It's not, there's still no skin wound like high food. So it's, it's much, much better than percutaneous microwave abrasion. So, and there's no pelvic lesion and it can be a day surgery because there's no abdominal wound. So I recommend people here, you know, you can also try this one, transcervical uh, or transvaginal microwave abrasion, especially for this. But if for type four, type five, type six, you can also do that, but it's not as safe as type one, two, three, because if the tumor is close to serosa, it's not as safe as these three kinds, three types of myoma. And for the insertion, antenna insertion hole, I usually use, uh, uh, this area or this area, and then if if you if you have a uh, big uterine myoma or the uh, big uter 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 uterus, huge uh, adenomyosis, sometimes I use the hole as a ventral cup, the same one, and then we want to reduce the insertion hole. You know, it's as few as possible. It's so good, and then. 
regarding the complication, uh, you 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 have to be aware of the possibility of uh, bowel injury, uh, ureter injury, bladder injury, and nerve injury. And besides that, you have to be aware of the possibility of, you know, maybe sometimes you are insertion here. That's this one. But the previous insertion hole, maybe there is an air bubble comes from the volcano. Yeah. Because sometimes if you insert this one, an abrasive area, then it's already communicate, communicable with the previous uh, abrasion area. Then the, 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 the hot air bubble will come out of here. And then if you, you are not aware of the, the, the condition, then uh, there may be, there is a possibility of uh, burn, uh, you know, up this area. And if, if the location is lower, maybe to the urinary bladder surface. Uh, this, uh, this is another kind of uh, burn, uh, maybe also from this area. So I recommend, uh, this uh, another uh, doctor, he sent me uh, his uh, pictures uh, to me and asked my uh, opinions. And this, this uh, you can find the, the uh, colon, this, the colon serosa, you know. There's a very mild uh, burn, but I, I think it's okay. Uh, it's okay. Now, if you're aware of that condition, then it's safe. This is uh, another doctor's case. Uh, he, he used transvaginal root, uh, maybe microwave abrasion or radio frequency abrasion and the abrasion uh, uh, bowel and uh, didn't find that condition. And then patient uh, had severe peritonitis and then the patient come to see me, ask my uh, 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 opinions about first, further uh, treatment. And I found, I found his abdominal wound is so big. It's uh, operated by a surgeon, general surgeon. He, he is uh, maybe only 28 or 29 years old. So I think it's a severe uh, complication. We have been aware of the possibility of every kind of complications. This is another case uh, sent to me. And then uh, I found uh, this uh, abrasion area in uh, uterine cervix and also Vagina for positive vagina phonics. That's because usually it's because it's due to uh, the steam. The steam comes out from the endometrial cavity. That means this case was, you know, what the endometrium was abraded. And then, then the doctor did, did not find the condition and then one of the uh, assistant, uh, uh, no, or the, 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 the ultrasound uh, sonographer, yeah, uh, no, no, uh, were not aware of the condition. So then uh, the service or uh, positive phonics were abraded. But fortunately, it's so easy to, to uh, treat it. Uh, because of time of limitation, I want to just quickly say about uh, the, the median abrasion rate is 97% and the, the uh, and, and the for for two years after two years is 92% and the size interestingly for HIFU the size and the location of the eating fibroid were significantly afraid of affect the abrasion rate and the rate of lesion volume reduction. But for microwave abrasion, it's quite different. The size and location of the eternal fiber did not significantly affect the abrasion rate because we can use the laparoscopic to, to, to separate the bowel and the nerve away from the uterine serosa. So we can abrade most area or we want to abrade. And then uh, I, th I think we don't have time to, to uh, discuss about 
you can uh, there is a, a, a paper compare compare microwave abrasion and a high intensity focus ultrasound high full and then they found the the treatment effect is similar and abrasion rate is similar but uh, microwave abrasion uh, you know spent you spent much less time only half maybe half times of, of ultrasound guided high food and then uh, compare with uh, with radio frequency high abrasion you can see see microwave abrasion the abrasion time is much less than radio frequency abrasion uh, it's much faster microwave abrasion Lastly, I want to share my uh, opinion about uh, the, the how to choose uh, the case for microwave abrasion. I, I like to use, because I use HIFU for already 15 years, and I treat uh, about one third of cases in Taiwan. And uh, so I still like to I use HIFU for most uh, patients with uterine fibroid, but because I like I just tell you because I don't find HIFU has good abrasion rate, uh, su successful rate uh, as microwave. So then I choose adenomyosis first or transvaginal microwave first. Yeah, for adenomyosis. And for uterine fibroid concomitant with ovarian tumor, I always suggest patient to do microwave and then remove uterine uh, ovarian tumor uh, at the same time. And uh, the, if there is a type six, type seven, especially type seven myoma, you, you still can use HIFU, but there's a limitation of uh, the abrasion of the the area uh, the peripheral area of the type 7 myoma because of bowel around in the myoma and then for this condition is of course you can use laparoscopy to do myomectomy very easily but it's very big maybe or, or the pedicle is very big maybe you don't like to remove it you can just do microwave abrasion it's easier and then if there is abdominal wall liposuction or keloid, usually we prefer, we don't use HIFU to prevent the skin from burn. And then you can use laparoscopy, microwave abrasion, and or transvaginal ultrasound abrasion. But for keloid, especially good for this one, but transvaginal root, because with transvaginal, with laparoscopy, there still will be a uh, micro, micro, still be uh, uh, inducing uh, keloid for the patient. And if there is a cutisac lesion, of course you can use HIFU, but just like I just tell you, I just told you that we, we can uh, use, still can use microwave abrasion, even if you cannot separate the, the posterior adhesion between uh, uterine posterior wall, uh, uterine serosa and the uh, bowels. Even is uh, obliterated, obliterated the cul de sac, and but it's not a good a good idea for you to do transvaginal way uh, uh, microwave, and then if there is an anterior uterine serosa adhesion, you cannot use high full, but you you can still use microwave abrasion or transvaginal way uh, abrasion microwave abrasion. This is uh, currently my my uh, opinions. Actually, I still have. Only uh, a very limited uh, experience in uh, microwave abrasion because I just started to do this uh, two years ago. Uh, uh, the host just uh, introduced me that I have ever to uh, ever done uh, twelve thousand uh, cases of surgical operation. Uh, that's that's ten something years ago. It's old data. So far, I have, have ever done more than twenty thousand surg surgical operation already. I, because I spent already almost 40 years uh, in the uh, gynecological area. And then, uh, then uh, I, I also provide you, there are already almost uh, more than 20 hospitals and clinics in Taiwan 
providing a microwave abrasion service for uterine fibroid in Taiwan. There is there are also many hospitals providing uh, the microwave abrasions service for the other area, such as uh, thyroid, maybe also breast, and also maybe other uh, areas. I don't I don't know, but anyway, I'm very happy to share all, all friends all around the world to uh, my limited experience to you. And thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thanks to Professor Chun's excellent sharing. I believe everyone has uh, learned a lot. And now we are about to enter the discussion part. Professor Chun, now we have two questions in our chat box. Uh, the first one, how long after microwave ablation can patients with fertility needs oh, yeah. consider getting pregnant? I got some pregnant? question. Yeah. Come question from uh, the host. Uh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The how long after microwave ablation can patients with fertility needs consider getting pregnant? Usually, we usually say uh, after after we usually uh, inject uh, uh, prevent uh, vaginal spotting and to let the uh, uh, be raised. For Jun, more time, so the injection of NIH. So maybe, right? Pardon. Now we no cannot wish. hear your voice clearly. Maybe we have uh, no you voice. have some collection problems. No voice. Why? Uh, now, now we can hear you. Just some collection problems. Now it's okay. Oh, now it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I should be time too. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, because we usually inject uh, GNIH, uh, long-acting GNIH, and the uh, patient usually has a secondary amenorrhea for six months. So most patients in Taiwan, uh, after high or microwave abrasion or uh, after radio frequency abrasion, usually they, they get uh, try to they try to get pregnant after six months. But theoretically speaking, they can try to get pregnant after three months. Yeah, yeah, they can try that. But uh, the, uh, the second question is how to prevent the uh, endometrial damage. Actually, I, I just uh, talked about it, uh, uh, that uh, you can try to, uh, you have to watch, watch about the location of endometrium and the distance between the endometrium and your antenna insertion, at least. I think at least maybe one centimeter is better, much safer. And you have to to look at the, the area you are abrading currently because you can move the antenna, move to the the to the superficial area to, to abrade some other area, and then to prevent further spreading to the endometrial cavity. And the second method is to in inject the, to some fluid, some water into the endometrial cavity. And then uh, it's a, a, another way to prevent damage of uh, endome endometrium. And then another question is, can we use water gel to make barrier between uterus and adjacent visceral organ during abrasion? Yes, I do that. I, I, I just talk about it. I use water. I use water to uh, to uh, to make a barrier between uh, uterine serosa and adjacent visceral organ, especially bowels. So I I, I recommend everybody use uh, this artificial ascites to prevent prevent uh, the the damage of uh, uh, visceral organ or bowels. And uh, there's another question. If you encounter multiple uterine fibroids, should you treat them in stage or at once? I always treat it at once because 
it's not like HIFU. HIFU for HIFU, uh, for a big myoma, we or multiple big myoma, we can uh, do that uh, do the treatment in two times because there is no abdominal wound, no skin wound. But for percutaneous microwave abrasion, there's surgical wound on the abdominal skin. So I always try my best to do uh to, to, to treat or tumors or uterine fibroid at one time. I suggest if you find if you find it's not easy to, to treat it at one time, you can use GNIH first to let make the tumor become smaller. Or and uh, if long one long acting GNIH is not enough you can uh you can uh, inject maybe two two times and then wait for maybe half a year to treat it at one time but if you use transdermal transdermal ultrasound guided microwave abrasion because there is no abdominal wound no surgical wound i think you can uh do the op surgical uh, operation the microwave abrasion at two times, yeah, it's uh, two stage, I think. Yeah, there's another question. Uh, do you do the uh, fibroid uh, uh, biopsy during uh, operation? Yeah, there's, uh, there are some doctors in uh, China, also in Taiwan, they do the routine uh, biopsy for the uh, uterine fibroid. I, I also, I'm also thinking about the the uh, condition that if we want to want to need to do that is is a uh, protection for medical ducts yeah because you you can uh, because although the possibility of malignancy is very very low and uh, but it's a protection for the uh, medical ducts I I'm actually I'm trying to to do that too but uh, in the past two years I don't do that but but I think. It's a good way if you if you want to uh, prevent yourself from uh, the any legal problem. Maybe you can try to do that uh, if you if if the need if the if biopsy needle is is a feasible for you. And uh, another question in a dermatologist patient, how do you choose which area of the region to abrade when it's is difficult involvement of the myometry. Oh, actually, no, no, no. I I treat I avoid every area. I can, uh, you know, try my best. I usually try my best to avoid every area, not only one area. If if the the myometry is thicker than three centimeter, but actually uh, my case are uh, usually thicker than four or five centimeter. Uh, some cases are, are even more than eight or ten centimeters. It's very big adenomyosis. But usually, for those cases with uh, a myometry thickness of three centimeters or less, we don't use any kind of invasive surgery or even uh, high flu. We just use uh, medication. Uh, for those with uh, three centimeter or more you can try to abrade every area you try you want to uh, abrade it uh, try i uh, just try our best to abrade because uh based on my ex past experience of high food treatment we know if you uh, abrade the area of more than 70 percent 70 percent of uh Adenomyotic volume was abrated. Then the patient's symptoms will be almost relieved, relieved completely. If it's less than 70%, then you cannot, almost cannot relieve the patient's uh, complaints, including uh, severe dysmenorrhea or hypermenorrhea or menorrhagia or infertility. So you have to try your best to abrade every area you can abrade. Then uh, you can uh, that your abraded area 
maybe not only more than 70%, maybe more than 80% or even 90%, then, then uh, the patient will get much more good result. Okay. Uh, some questions, I, I don't think I, I, I see all questions. Maybe there are still some questions not sure on my, uh, my screen. 刚才应该还有一些问题没有出来，被跳过去，被跳过去。OK， I just try my best to see if the oh yeah， there's、uh, another question. Oh yeah， t h e s he said、uh, he or she he said I have case complicated after microwave abrasion for superficial endometriosis in rectus sheath muscle. We had wound dehiscence and skin ulcer with thermal damage healing after three months. What's your comment? Wow, I don't have the experience of this kind of complication. <laughs> so I, I, I'm, I'm not as experienced as you. You know, I don't have this complication. Uh, you say uh, your image is uh, in rectus sheath muscle. Oh, I think you 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 can, you can uh, because I have ever uh, seen a case of a severe skin burn of the typhoon. Uh, I th I I th I think the condition may be like you, and they need plastic surgeon to do skin graft. To to repair the, the abdominal wound, I think you have to uh, ask for help from the plastic surgeon. When when doing microwave operation to treat uterine fibroid, are there any size or limitation? Yeah, people usually say uh, oh, the limitation may be uh, eight centimeter is much better. But I have uh, I have ever tried to, to 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 treat some cases of ten centimeter or even fifteen centimeter, but it's still okay. Uh, and then uh, because labra the, with laparoscopic guide, you the I prefer the the cho main choka one that was in uh in the um umbilicus. That's much beautiful for for women. And then uh, if it's the tumor is too big, you know, uh the wound. Uh, has to be uh, higher, you know, the, the superior to the umbilical area. And I don't like con that condition. So I usually use GNI to, to let the, the tumor mass be smaller. But I don't think it's a, there's a real limitation for the even fibroid size. And, uh, but the usually most people say, um, less than eight centimeter is easier for us to treat. Uh, I think treat them. Okay, I think, I think maybe, I, I think I I almost I, I screen the. Oh, I don't. You can okay. I think I maybe I, I response to almost all questions already. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank so, you for the question. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have any more questions here? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. It's on time. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. As we come to the end of this insightful webinar on microwave vibration for uterus, we would like to express our gratitude to all the participants and our speaker, Professor Jun. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. You. Hope to thank see you, everybody, anywhere sometime. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, well, uh, I hope we can make uh, this uh, difference in improving the lives of uh, patients affected by the uh, uterine fibroids and uh, azolomyosis. Yes, let's work together. Thank you all for your participation and we wish you continued uh, success in your professional field. Uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.